So Ancestry released the pro tool called Enhanced Shared Match List. And I've been getting the same questions over and over. What am I supposed to do with this? Is this actually different from regular shared matches? Can it help me figure out where my mystery cousin fits? And maybe the biggest question of all, is this tool a game changer or is it just another shiny button that doesn't really change the way we build our family trees? In this video, I will explain what the Enhanced Shared Match List does, how it differs from the previous one, and most importantly, how you can apply it to your real life DNA mysteries. Let's start by pulling up a DNA match on Ancestry. Scroll down your match list and select a match. In this case, I will choose Marlene. When you open a match, you'll see the usual Shared Matches tab. That's been there for years. If you have the Pro tool, you'll see Pro beside the name. The original shared match list or the one outside of the Pro tools looks like this. You will see matches in common between David and Marlene. You'll see that Devin matches at 2,301 Center Morgans and is a sister, and by the way, this is my brother. <laughs> Nancy, who shares 456 Center Morgans, that would make her probably a first cousin once removed, and Jennifer with 52 shared second Morgans, which makes her either a half third cousin or a third cousin once removed. For decades, we used this information to predict family clusters. However, this information is not triangulation confirmation necessarily, as it lacks the fact that you share DNA in the same place you only know that you share DNA. So the Ancestry DNA Pro Enhanced Shared Match List does take things a step further. You're not just seeing who you and your match both match with, but also you can see how much DNA your match, Marlene, shares with your matches, Devin, Nancy, and Jennifer, and so on. You can also sort the matches by either your closest match, the most shared CMs with you, or your match's closest match. So in the shared match list for David, and I click the enhanced shared match list and instantly see that his sister Devin shares 2300 Santa Morgans with him, we expected that. And now we see that Marlene, an unknown match, shares 41 Santa Morgans with Devin, but she only shares 110 Centimorgans with David. If David and Devin are siblings, why doesn't Marlene share more Centimorgans with Devin? That's the nature of inheritance. Siblings don't inherit the same amount of DNA as all of their relatives, which is why the advice is to test everyone in your family if you want to build out your genetic family tree. You will pick up some DNA matches, but your relatives will pick up even more. But notice we can sort the list by Marlene's closest matches. Notice David shares 40 centimorgans with one of Marlene's daughters and 52 centimorgans with another. It will be interesting to see Devin's, my, shared match list with Marlene and see if I pick up more or less centimorgans than my brother. But notice that one of Marlene's daughters has a family tree connected in a potential common ancestor. So if we look at the three and know that David shares more DNA with Jennifer's mother, we could make the case of how these relatives are connected. It's a simple but powerful sorting trick that lets us follow the Centimorgan trail and start grouping people more strategically. But here's your caution flag. Even though this tool feels like it's showing you a triangle between David, Jennifer, and Marlene, it does not confirm triangulation. That's a specific term in genetic genealogy that means all three people much match each other on the same segment of the same chromosome. Unfortunately, Ancestry does not give us segment data or a chromosome browser, so we must be careful not to overstate what this tool tells us. That being said, this is still a new way to look at familiar data, and I think it's worth celebrating. Before we investigate the shared match list and other tools on Ancestry, I like to visualize relationship. 
If you've watched enough of Andy's videos, you know he draws things out when teaching me and others who can't picture what numbers suggest. So I noticed that David and Marlene share 110 cinnamorgans. An ancestry's prediction is that they are a second cousin once removed or a half first cousin twice removed. They suggest it's on the parental side. To see this data, ancestry is missing a way to visualize what the relationship means. So my go-to tool for this, it's the shared CM tool on DNA Painter. You'll find a link for this tool in the description box. Key in 110 cinnamorgans in the tool and we can visualize possible relationships. There are numerous possibilities, but I will start with what Ancestry predicts and then explore other possibilities that 110 cinnamorgans could be if these predictions do not materialize. I know that David is my brother and that we both match Marlene, so I will check off these relationships. Now I am using a drawing tool to draw on DNA Painter. If you wanna know what that tool is, just leave me a comment in the comment section. Again, I know David is my brother. I know that Carolyn and Nancy are confirmed cousins to David, but for the purpose of this video, I'm pretending I don't know that. That way I can use them later to validate any hypotheses we form about Marlene. The next match on David's share match list is Jennifer. Now she could be a half third cousin or a third cousin once removed. And if all we had were the shared match list, we would have a question marks on our tree like this. However, with the enhanced shared match tool, we know that Jennifer is Marlene's daughter. When we look at the 110 centimorgans for Marlene and the 52 for Jennifer, we're starting to see that the half relationships are less likely. We're either looking for David's great grandparents' names or his great great grandparents' names to align with Marlene and Jennifer. Now, why didn't I just jump to the common ancestor tool because Jennifer has one? Well, it's like being a swimming official. I like to know what I expect to see in a legal swim rather than look at a swimmer and wonder if it's a legal stroke or not, or a legal turn or push off. If I don't know what to expect to see, how will I know if it's correct when I see the recommendations? So I expect to see Geisler, Hoppe, Peak, Townley, Zemptain, Snyder, Comfort, and Marr for my father's line. Brown, Gordon, Townsend, Clayball, Hankinson, Kramer, Anderson, or Sparks for my mother's line. Now let's go check out that handy dandy common ancestor tool that Jennifer has. Now here's my challenge. Jennifer has a tree and it has a mother, but the mother's line doesn't extend. However, there are some recommendations for a common ancestor from the surname Townley, which is on my father's side. That's odd because David shares DNA with Jennifer's mother. So we'll check out the common ancestor. Notice we're looking at a through line for Richard Townley. It would be the same if we chose Anne Sexton. The trees show that people I already have in David's tree and the possible li missing links between Jennifer and David. And if I compare this through line to the shared CM tool, it aligns with one of the two likely options. So now what? Well, I have validated the folks in David's tree, so I would need to see if Marlene is the daughter of William O. Townley. If that's the case, since I know Jennifer's mother shares DNA with David, I will have figured out who the missing link is and I can confidently add these links to my family tree. Again, I don't wanna say confirm. The reason is I don't have the segment data to guarantee that Marlene and Jennifer share the same DNA on the same segment in the same location as David. So it's not triangulation, but we have very, very strong evidence that these are our second and third cousins through Henry David Tanley, who my second great grandmother, Evelyn Tanley, adored. Now, what about Caroline and Nancy? Well, 
I can click the view through lines under Richard Townley's name. Then I see they are descendants of Eveline, as I have confirmed. If we slide to the right, there's another person to investigate, but there are five matches under Henry David Townley. These are two other names, DNA matches for his children, and then three DNA matches under William O. When we click on that, we see Jennifer, Shane, and Landon. We don't see Marlene, but that's because she doesn't have a tree attached to her profile. However, I recall seeing Shane as Marlene's nephew or grandson and noticing where he appears. But remember, Jennifer has a family tree that isn't linked to her mother's ancestry, so this through line is predicted. All of this is pointing in the right direction of having a through line that is valid, but I won't say confirm. I will say most likely. Reflecting on the advantage of the enhanced shared match list, knowing that Marlene was Jennifer's mother provided me with additional clues about whom I should search for between William Townley and Jennifer. Without that clue and just the normal shared match list, it might take me a while to figure out how Marlene was related to Jennifer. So yes, this tool changes the game on Ancestry for building out a more reliable family tree using genetic genealogy clues. I wish there was a visualization of matches like DNA Painter or a link to an audio populate DNA painter from Ancestry. When we see shared matches, we have something that benefits those who need to see and visualize things before they believe them. So that would be a really fun tool. I know that my heritage has one, and whether our Ancestry links out to the DNA painter so that we can plug in the number or if they generate one of their own, this would be a handy advantage onto the site. And so long as we don't start saying enhanced shared match lists validate through the lines and DNA discoveries, I love the direction we're heading in. But when I think of a game changer rather than something that changes the game, I want something that makes gene genetic genealogy research easier for someone like me who's been a Debbie Downer of DNA rather than Andy who it all makes sense to them. And so this is a step in the right direction and I can use multiple tools to give me confidence in the tree I'm building. But if it's going to be a game changer, I want things to be a lot easier. So this tool changes the game. It enhances the game. But it's not the game changer that makes it super amazing. Does that make sense? What are your thoughts? So if you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like and a comment on your way out before you head on to the next video about doing genetic genealogy and building your family tree.